Our next unit is about rotation. In this course, we have been studying what we call translational motion. Translational motion is the motion of the center of mass of an object. For example, if I throw this cardboard like a projectile, it would follow a parabolic trajectory. If there is no rotation involved, then every point on the dolphin would follow a parabola as it goes. However, if, you, if I throw it with a rotation, it would go through the air like this, which means that the head of the dolphin is not going to trace a parabola, neither would its tail. In fact, only one point on the dolphin would follow a parabolic path, the center of mass. Let's give it a try. The projectile motion we studied is about the translational motion of a projectile. The study on how an object rotates about an axis is rotational motion. We will start with the kinematics, the description of motion. To describe translational motion, we use the position, displacement, velocity, acceleration, and time. To describe rotational motion, we have theta for angular position delta theta for angular displacement, and the omega, the Greek letter omega, angular velocity, and the Greek letter alpha, angular acceleration, and t still the same for time. The standard unit for position and the displacement is meters, and for angles, we use the radians for standard unit, not degrees. Velocity is meters per second, so omega, the standard unit, is uh, radians per second. For alpha, the standard unit is uh, radians per second squared and the time seconds. Just like displacement is the final position minus initial position, the delta theta is uh, final minus initial angle. By definition, average velocity is the displacement divided by time, so the average Angular velocity is the displacement, angular displacement divided by time. And the average acceleration is delta V over delta T, so the average angular acceleration is the delta omega over delta T. An instantaneous angular velocity is also an average angular velocity. It's just the average is taken under the limit when the time is so short that it approaches to zero. We're dividing, that means that this is the rise over run. So it is also the slope of a angle, angular position versus time graph. Because the delta theta is the rise and the delta t is the run. The instantaneous angular acceleration is also an average angular acceleration. It's just that it's, the average is taken under the limit when the time is so short that it approaches to zero. And again, this is a dividing that is a rise over run. So it is the slope of a angular velocity versus a time graph because the delta omega is the rise and the delta t is the run. Because the average angular velocity is delta theta over delta t, that means that delta theta is a average angular velocity times time. If you're multiplying, that is like height times space. So it is also the area of a omega versus t graph because the average omega is the height and the delta t is the base. And the delta omega, according to this definition, it is the average alpha times time. So average angular acceleration times time. Again, if we're multiplying, that is like height times space. So this is the area of a alpha versus t graph.